the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. Have you checked your fruit today? Have you checked your fruit today? I'm trying to tell you something. It is very important for us to learn to check our fruit. What fruit we're talking about here? I'm going to show you. We started here. I'll make sure we all remember that because that's what we want to measure what we're doing. It says right here in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, which is patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, which is faithfulness, meekness, temperance, which is, which is self-control, against such there is no law. And today we want to focus is on meekness. And you can see right here the definition in the Bible as well as in its uh, dictionary, meekness equals submissiveness and humility slash humble. Now, most of you sit there and say submissiveness, right? Well, I just want to make sure a man of God, woman of God, a Christian is supposed to submit to God. A lot of cases, because of tradition and everything else, we don't get to this point where people think they're supposed to submit to the, 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 the man of God or the woman of God. Uh, listen, the first and only source is to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible said those are led by the Spirit of God are called the sons of God, all right, or the children of God. We have to all remember you are supposed to be led by the Holy Spirit. Ministry, remember what the whole purpose of ministry is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Do the work and you working with God that's in Matthew, that's in Mark. The fact is you're supposed to be working with God, the Holy Spirit working with you to do the work of the ministry, which is go and proclaim and preach the gospel. I know some of you sit there and say, no, I ain't got time for the issue. You do it in your job, you do it in your home. It is by your life, not so much about your words, but it is your life and, and what you're showing. And this, the whole purpose is to show these characteristics in your life as part of your witness. Failure to do these make your witness a little difficult. Amen? So, and I like the fact is that when it says submissive to God and then humility is to recognize you have, those of us who have come, um, come into the body of Christ, know that we have come a long way. I know many of you have probably recognized that you have come a long way. You're not what you used to be. You're not where you want to be, but you're not what you used to be. And because of that humility, and in recognizing that the, the distance you have made, the progress you have made in the body of Christ has been because of the Holy Spirit, not because of your ability, but because of him. Not because of the approval of man, but because of him. Always remember that. You are who you are in Christ Jesus. That's more important than being in the flesh. And then that's where some people boast and be proudful. But in the body of Christ, you know where your source comes from. You know where your help comes from. You're humble enough to recognize and appreciate it. And you're graceful enough to give grace to other people because other people haven't arrived either. And you don't sit there and need to sit there and, and try to put, look, you know, look down at somebody because you don't like where they are. You, you, you pray for them. And you be humble enough to sit there and say, just what God did to me, he can do to you. And my job is to help encourage you to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what humility means. And that's what submissive means. Submit to God. Meekness. Doesn't mean weakness. It means strength. While I'm concerned. It means submitted to God. And, and one of the things I want to show you in this study uh, is the fact is that you the benefit of meekness is starting here in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 1. Now I Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who is in, who in presence am based among you, but being absent, I am bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I'm present with that confidence 
wherein I think to be bold against some, would think of us as we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And heaven and the readiness to revenge are disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? And that's what people try to look and try to assess us based on our outward appearance. If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord has given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not, I should not be ashamed that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Let such one, let such a one think this, that such as we are in words by letter, when we are of absence, such will we be also indeed when we are present. Paul is sitting there telling you, look, let me tell you something. <laughs> Somebody may sit there and tell you that I look weak and contemptible and in the presence of my word, my letters are strong. Paul is sitting there saying, no, when you see me, just like you think about those letters, that's how I'm going to be in words and deeds. I'm not going to, you, you can sit there, somebody can try to tell you I look weak, but I guarantee you when you see me, you're going to recognize there ain't no weakness in me. And, and, and that's not even this unusual with, with Paul. Like I said, I don't know if I told you before, when Jesus, I think I said in the last segment, when Jesus, when the people came to Jesus' house to arrest him, not in the garden, I'm talking about in the house to arrest him, and, 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 and Jesus says, not my time yet, uh, I'll be here for a little while, <laughs> they went back to the, to the priests and the Pharisees, and, and, they, and, and the Pharisees said, where is he? He said, they said, ain't nobody talked like that before. Uh, I don't know why. If you want to go with you go get him, but ain't nobody talk like that. That that man talked with power. And that's that's accounted in a lot of cases in the scriptures. And and then tell you the truth, even the disciples went out and cast out demons. They went out, there were 70 of them, and they went up by twos and went to different towns and villages that Jesus would eventually come to, and they cast out demons and healed people, and they came back rejoicing and said, Man, even the demons are subject unto us. You know, you're not going to be little weak persons and demon come on out of him. No, you're going to be strong in power because that's what you are in Christ Jesus. Now, some people, one of the person that, matter of fact, I even feel bad about, not bad, but the fact is that one of my mentors, one of the person I looked up to was Fred Price, and uh, he passed away this week. Uh, matter of fact, I think it was uh, Saturday or Friday. Uh, the last week, the day is the uh, 16th of uh, February. So he passed away about four days ago. He's going back to the Lord. Uh, one of the things Fred Price used to be uh, commenting on is some people keep trying to say he was he was arrogant or bold, uh, but he was he was just proud to to be a Christian. But he and he wasn't somebody. To be, portraying weakness, but boldness and confidence in the things that he have in knowing of the Lord. And I'm saying that Jesus didn't walk around being uh, cowardice or anything either. Jesus sat there and <laughs> he had the, he demonstrated his power. And, that, and that's why I think we always make sure we understand that as, as Christians, we're not weak. We're not, we're not supposed to be, we're not trying to demonstrate our weakness. And I guarantee you, a Christian stands you know, I like this also in Psalms 22, 22. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye who fears the Lord, see, that's what I'm talking about, the submissiveness. Praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. 
all you see of Israel, for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither has he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vow before them that fear him. The meat shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord and all the kingdoms, all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee for the kingdom is the Lord and he is the governor among the nations. I like the fact about the fact is that the meek shall eat and be satisfied. Huh? See, there's benefits in being uh, meek in the eyes of God, meaning there's benefits of being submissive to the will of God. And that's what we want to do. And I think that's where we get in trouble when we try to be uh, submissive to man. Stop trying to please man. Christianity is not about being a men pleaser. The Bible says that. I didn't bring it up. The Bible says that. The Bible is all about submitting to God, praising God, led by the Holy Spirit, receiving Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. You are supposed to walk in the boldness of God. The Bible said is you come boldly to the king through the throne of God. See, that's not about weakness. And by the fact, the Bible said we walk by faith, not by sight. And, and he said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a love, power, and a sound mind. You're not weak. You're supposed to be meek, being humble. Humble the fact is, Lord, I thank you that you brought me a mighty long way. Lord, I thank you you have given me the things that I have. Lord, I thank you because you are my hope. You are my salvation. You are my source. That's what a person, the humility is about. It's not about what I have gotten. It's about what he has given me and what he is doing. He wakes me up in the morning. He gets me through the day. He blessed me. He exalts me. He lifts me up. Come on now, he heals me, huh? He protects me, he protects my family, he protects us, our source is him, and that's humility. And that's what we want to get past that and saying about our own ability. But we definitely want to be able to be submit to him and not man, and that's where we get into trouble. And I even back, you know, we back to the fact is that the, the weapons of warfare, that you, you are in a warfare. And I don't know soldiers, see soldiers on a battlefield fights and go toward the enemy and, and fights in the battle. And that battle, you can't be a coward in a battle. If you do, you're going to fail. You have to be strong. You have to be bold. You can be, you, and you have to use weapons to fight your battles. And those are spiritual weapons because we're not fighting a physical war, we're fighting a spiritual war. And we are representative of Christ and the representative in the army. You are on a battlefield. And if you're on that battlefield, you have no time to coward. You have no time to be weak. How can it be weak in a battlefield? When you're weak in a battlefield, then all you, you just, you, you already been defeated. Because the enemy is not going to come at you. Oh, can I, can I, can I, can I take your, your spot? Can I, can I, can I, can I take things from you? No. Enemy comes. The Bible said that, what it says that the, the king, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violence takes it by force, tries to take it. You have to be strong. That's why we're saying is that the, the, the image of a Christian, it need to be the image of a warrior. You are in a warfare, spiritual warfare, and the enemy is trying to take you out. The Bible says Satan come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus come to give life and life more abundantly. So we take the abundance life, but we got to understand we're in a warfare, a spiritual warfare. And we got to fight that with spiritual weapons. We got to fight it through prayer. We got to fight it through the word. We got to fight it by being obedient. We got to fight it by being abiding in him. God Almighty, amen. So that's what I'm saying is as far as meekness, it just means submissive submissive to God, not man. I want to make sure I emphasize that. And you are in a warfare and you better be able to be a good soldier because you're on a battlefield. Your day, every day of your life, there's a spiritual battlefield. You know it. But the good thing about it is you're not fighting it alone. You go through the valley, the shadows of death, and he's with you. That's what I like about being a Christian. That's what I like about being fruit, 
That's why I'm saying is you have a victory. Just walk in that confidence in the word of God. Have you checked your fruit today? Are you weak or are you strong? Are you humble in the things of God? Have you checked your fruit today? And remember, weakness is not meekness. Meekness is submitting to God, humble through what he has done for you, and being able to fight this battle, the spiritual battle, with the weapons he's given you. Amen? God bless you, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to these videos. God bless. Bye-bye.